well, I'd f I've, <laughs> I guess I have a few examples, but the first one I have is when I, when they first told me that I needed a heart transplant, I wasn't interested. To me, you know, the things that I've read about it and stuff, I was just like, you know, I was like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and, you know, they're just like, well, if you don't do it, then, you know, you're going to die, da, 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 da. And there was time they wanted to put um, a defibrillator in. And they, 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 wasn't, they didn't want to do it, actually. I wanted the defibrillator because I wanted to come out the hospital. Because the way you get out the hospital, I used to try to figure out every way possible to not have to stay in the hospital. So I found out that if you get a defibrillator, you can go home with a home nurse and have the medicine dripping that's supposed to sustain your heart. But you have to have a defibrillator. But because I was like prone to like infections and stuff, they were not too keen on it. And I remember it was like, it was definitely a big disagreement. It was just like, no, we don't want it. And I just, just kept on with them. You know, I came with, you know, as I said, I go back to writing. Like, you know, being in a hospital, you just sit there and you do nothing anyway. And I sat there and I write, wrote all the pros and cons and how, and then I took them from an emotional standpoint. You know, I told them, okay, yeah, these are the cons. These are things that could happen practically. But these are things that, you know, if you do let me out or if you do do this for me, that can be helpful. Because I was like, you know, you guys know me to be a very happy-go-lucky person, and being here is making me, you know, depressed. And if I get depressed, then, you know, the outcome of my you know, my prognosis is going to, you know, lessen because I'm just, you know, my will to just keep going is going to get less, more, you know, I'm getting more, and I just, different aspects, so I kept, I went to them and, you know, they sat down and they listened to me because I was just like, you know, I gave them, I understand what you're, like, I made sure they realized that I understood what they were, where they were coming from. So can, can you, can you role play that, sort of pretend I'm the doc, can you think about and sort of resurrect the language that you use? Can I, mm -hmm. you know, Doc, can I talk to you about, you know? So. Yeah, well, in hospital setting, you know, they come to your room, and I was just like, um, and you get a moment after you're done with your rounds, if we can talk for just a little bit. You know, doctor goes, okay, well, when I'm, I'm done, you know, come back and talk to you. He comes back, and he sits down, and I was like, I know what your immediate answer is to the defibrillator is no, but let me go through some things that I think, you know, we didn't consider overall. And, you know, of course, he's kind of like, <sighs> and I'm like, okay, this is what I understand. I understand if I do the defibrillator that I am, you know, prone for infection. I do know the chances of, you know, going outside the hospital that the defibrillator can fire and I can get an infection in my pick line which is the line where they drop all our medicines in, um, that something could happen to me outside of the hospital. I don't have immediate care to the hospital. Um, I understand that uh, you guys would prefer to have a closer eye on all the patients, being that, especially with me, I have all these other problems going on. Um, with the diet, you know, I was, I guess, borderline from the medicine, diabetic, and I had a magnesium issue, and um, my ejection fraction, I think, was like, I think, 15 or 10 percent, something to that extent. <laughs> and I know that it's, I'm weak and, you know, you think that I'm going to overdo it when I go out because I'm just a, a very extra person. But <laughs> uh, I understand all of those things. But consider these things, you know, if I do go out, I'm a happier person. I will make sure I take care of, you know, just as I'm in here and you know that from just, you know, nurses tell you that I do take care of myself and I'm always, you know, trying to keep things sanitary, washing my hands all the time. I'm always, you know, cleaning up and stuff like that. Um, if the, I live basically 10 minutes from the hospital, so it's not like I'm really far away. I won't leave Gainesville at all. I will make sure I stay here. And if anything happens, I will make sure I, I will call and I will check in. And I told him that, you know, just being depressed, you know, makes me, you know, it lets me give up easier. You know, all of this is a lot right now. So just give me a chance to see how it works. And, you know, 
in terms of, you know, maybe even getting reports, I would make sure the nurse give you reports and, and just went through basically the pros and cons and kind of on a standpoint where I didn't have as much medical, I guess, evidence to let me out, but I had enough personal stuff that I knew he could understand and I explained it to him in a way and as I said I did the pros and cons so I definitely just said it to him in that way and he's like okay he consider it and he went and considered I guess he talked to a couple other you know my doctors and nurses and pretty much they were like you know let's give her a chance see if she can handle it one way I let the nurses know I was responsible is when they came with my medicine, or I would call them for my medicine, I knew what time my meds, except in the morning, because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> but I knew my meds. Like, you know, when they they would say it, I was like, oh, yeah, I need this. I know I need that. At this, I need magnesium, you know, 40 milligrams, this. And I knew my milligrams, what time of day, how I was supposed to take it, when I was supposed to take it. And then I didn't call them for every little thing. Like, you know, I called them when, like, I handle myself with going to the bathroom on my own. I, you know, we were supposed to uh, monitor our ins and out, eyes and nose. So I made sure I had, we have dry erase boards, and I'd write down my eyes and nose, how much I took in, and um, I took in 240 at 3 o'clock. So when they came in, all they would do is look at the board, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it helped them. And they realized that I was keeping track of that, you know, I, as I said, I didn't go to them for every little thing. I got up and I exercised. I walked around, which was important, you know, in the hospital. And that was always pleasant with them. I didn't give, you know, at times I was sad and stuff, and they would, you know, but I was able to, you know, talk to them and tell them when I was sad. Or if I wasn't in the mood that day, I would go to them and say, you know, today's just not really a good day. And they would come and they would say, okay, <laughs> you know, we'll leave you alone a little bit. <laughs> and I just, you know, I think just not being a complete, you know, pest to them. <laughs> I was not a pest to them. I didn't call them for everything, as I said. I, I sometimes, I even went to make up my own bed. I got my own linens, you know. It was just something that, the things that I knew I was capable of, I did it. If Just because I was in the hospital and I knew the nurses would do it, that doesn't mean that you should just, because they have, it's like, how many patients on the floor? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you could just give them that, just that little break or something, you know, you call them for your medicine, and if you're in pain, okay, you know, but, or if I need to go in the shower, I already knew, you know, when I need to go in the shower to come off telly, hey, I'm coming off telly to take a bath, and I learn things, like I learned to put on back my telly and know where all the little things go. I learned all of that, so when I came out the shower, I hooked myself back up, I'm back on telly, and, you know, I called them, and they didn't have to worry about that. So I thought they, I think they saw all of that, and that's what they realized, how responsible I was, because they were like, she's, she's dealing with it herself. I think she can handle this, you know, outside.